Hello. In this instructional lesson, we are going to talk about how we go about determining the molar volume of a gas. We are looking at a gas collecting tube known as a udiometer. Notice that we have a little piece of magnesium ribbon kind of coiled around in a piece of copper just to hold it in place. And we insert it into the bottom of the gas collecting tube that's been completely filled with the reactant hydrochloric acid. So we have two reactants, magnesium ribbon, Mg, which is a solid, we'll know the mass of. And we're placing that into a gas collecting tube that's containing hydrochloric acid. We see that the pattern of chemical change is known as a single replacement. The magnesium is active, um, strong enough to displace the hydrogen from HCl. And we'll see hydrogen gas generated, so it will be a little G for gas. And the second product would be the salt magnesium chloride, which still just remains aqueous. We know that based on charge, magnesium plus two, chloride's a minus one, so we crisscross and get MgCl2. So to balance the equation, we see that for every one mole of magnesium, two moles of HCl are required. Little adjective here, solid, and this ends up to be aqueous. So one mole of magnesium with two moles of hydrochloric acid react to produce hydrogen gas and magnesium chloride. So in the experiment, you know that when the acid falls and finally meets the magnesium, you'll see hydrogen gas bubble up and you'll just start to see the gas collecting as a pocket of gas up top here. So that's kind of the general setup as you've read through in your procedure page. We're asked to process some pre-lab questions just to prep us for processing the, the very equation that you get from your own data. So let's read through this pre-lab scenario. I have a reaction where 0 0.028 grams of magnesium react with excess hydrochloric acid and it generates 31 milliliters of hydrogen gas. That gas was collected by water displacement. That's that gas collecting tube, the udiometer that we described. And the thermometer in the water it was reading 22 degrees Celsius. The barometric pressure of the day was reading 746 millimeters of mercury. Let's remind ourselves of the balanced chemical equation we wrote just a minute ago together. Solid magnesium reacts with aqueous hydrochloric acid, and we had balanced just a moment ago, forming hydrogen gas, leaving magnesium chloride dissolved in the water, aqueous. So here's some information that was kind of pertained to us, and I'll just record it underneath here. We had 0 0.028 grams of magnesium solid we had excess amounts of hydrochloric acid, so we poured in plenty to be sure all of the magnesium ribbon was consumed. And that's how you'll know your reaction has gone to completion, because literally the magnesium's gone, you don't see it anymore, and all of the bubbling has stopped. You've generated what they're telling us is 31 mils of hydrogen gas. Let's remind ourselves that that's what we refer to as our experimental value. So this would be you reading that graduated tube, the udiometer, and let's suppose it read 31 mils. So just to remind ourselves, back here on this gas selecting tube, these have graduations on them just as a, a burette would, and the pocket of, of gas, let's suppose, was 31 mils. So at the end of our experiment, when I, when I read that tube, it was reading 31. And that's our experimental value. Alrighty. The gas was collected by water displacement in 22 degrees. So let's talk about that a little bit, and that will lead us into Dalton's law of partial pressure. During your pre-lab reading, you were reading about Dalton's law here in step four. When we collect a gas by water displacement, we end up with a mixture of two gases. Remember just a moment ago how we said that this was 31 mils? Just reading that like you would a graduated cylinder. 31 mils is the volume of this pocket of gas up here. Well, inside of this pocket of gas actually contains, the vast majority is hydrogen, but a little bit of water pressure as well. Keep in mind 
this is an exothermic process. And so as this is uh, magnesium is getting consumed, it's not only generating hydrogen gas, it's also generating what I would say just a little bit of water, the little vapor from the water uh, liquid here, vaporizing to create gaseous water. So inside of this gas collecting tube where we see this pocket of air, it actually has a mixture of the hydrogen gas we bubbled from the reaction with a little bit of water pressure as well. What we do is simply use this chart to find the value of the partial pressure of water so we can subtract that from the barometric pressure. The total pressure, this is the Dalton's Law of Partial Pressure we're learning about in lecture. The total pressure of our system comes from two contributions, the hydrogen regenerated and the partial pressure of water inside the tube simply by bubbling the hydrogen through the water. We read this chart to find the contribution of water to the total pressure. Do you remember reading just a moment ago that the water was at 22 degrees Celsius? At 22 degrees Celsius, we read this chart and see the partial pressure of water as 19.8 millimeters of mercury. 19.8, that's the number we need to find to solve problem two. Dalton's law reminds us that the total pressure is equal to the sum of all the individual pr partial pressures inside of that mixture. Well, we've learned that there's actually two contributions. The total pressure was 746 millimeters of mercury. We'd like to know the contribution of the hydrogen and the contribution for water, its partial pressure, we looked up and said it was 19.8 from our chart. That chart needs to be placed inside of your um, you know, your lab report as well, so you have access to those values. Every time I move, I forget what it was. 19.8, I believe, millimeters of mercury. Yeah, 19.8. So my partial pressure of hydrogen is simply found by subtracting. What's 746, the partial, pr the, the total pressure from the barometer, minus the 19.8, that's the partial pressure of the water, the difference between those two is our partial pressure of hydrogen. We're just drying up hydrogen, getting rid of the water contribution. Simple subtraction, 746 minus 19.8. And now we see that the partial pressure of hydrogen is 726.2 millimeters of mercury. That's the P that we pivot with. So we've corrected the pressure by using Dalton's law of partial pressure. And if we're ahead of ourselves from, from lecture, Dalton's law simply says, if I have a mixture of gases, each contributing to the total pressure. So if I know the total and one of the two pieces, I can subtract the two to find the missing piece. Now we're going to solve for the theoretical moles of hydrogen, starting from the mass of magnesium. And this is simply our stoichiometry roadmap. Given a mass, we want to go to moles. So thinking about stoichiometry, this is our given, starting with a mass of magnesium. And this is what I want, but I want that value in a mole. I don't want to go all the way to liters because I'm not at standard conditions. So I'm going to begin with 0 0.028 grams of magnesium. And this is literally you putting up a tiny piece of magnesium ribbon onto the scale and getting a mass with as many decimal points as you possibly can. Our scales have up to four decimal places. That would be ideal on this situation. More decimals, the better. Now I want to change my moles or my grams into moles so I know my step one on the stoichiometry roadmap is to use molar mass. When I find mg on the periodic table, it has a molar mass of 24.3. Here comes the heart of our problem, my want over given ratio. The coefficient in front of the hydrogen is one. That's what we want to solve for. The coefficient in front of mg is also one. So we have a one to one stoichiometric ratio. 
starting with the mass of magnesium, 0 0.028. I'll divide by 24.3, the molar mass of magnesium to convert to moles, multiply by 1 over 1, and we see 0 0.001152 moles of hydrogen. I'm going to keep all of those decimals. The more the better here. 0 0.028. I did write that correctly. 0 0.028 grams of magnesium divide by molar mass times the stoichiometric ratio gets us at moles of H2. Now we'll use the ideal gas law to solve for the theoretical volume of hydrogen gas. The, the ideal gas law is known as the Pevnert equation. Pressure it's going to be that corrected pressure that we found up above here, the corrected pressure of just the dry hydrogen gas, 726.2 millimeters mercury. The corrected pressure stands for the P. Volume is our target variable. N was just solved for, well, let's put these in. Here's our pressure. Volume is what we're looking for, and that will come out in a liter unit. N stands for the number of moles of hydrogen, which we just solved for here, 0 0.001152. R is the ideal gas constant, and what we're learning is that I can match the R to whatever pressure unit I'm given. R, as soon as I wrote millimeters of mercury, I know I have to place in the 62.4, and that's a millimeter mercury liter over Kelvin mole. Just as a side note, if we had measured pressure in an atmosphere, R is 0 0.0821. If I measure pressure in a millimeter mercury, R is 62.4. And finally, if I measure pressure in a kilopascal, the metric unit, 8.31 is the constant. So I match the R to the given pressure unit, 62.4 in this case. The temperature we were given, back up here, remember how we looked at 22 degrees on our, our water bath? So 22 is our Celsius. We want to convert that to Kelvin. So we add 273 or 273.15 if you'd like to add those last two decimals. So the Kelvin would be 295.15 Kelvin units. Let's solve for V, the volume, and remind yourself that it will come out in a liter unit. And we can adjust that to be a milliliter as we were given up above. So on my calculator, we want to hit, remember how we'd isolate V? You'd want to hit NRT and divide by P to isolate the volume variable. Start on the right side, N times R times T, divide out by pressure. So let's hit that together, please. 0 0.001152 times our gas constant, 62.4 times the Kelvin temperature of 295.15, dividing that by 726.2 millimeters of mercury. And if I've hit correctly, my liter value is 0 0.0292. To make sure that we look at that in terms of milliliters, because that's what we looked at up here. Remember we had 31 mils as our experimental value? Let's put that into a more familiar unit that ends up to be 29.2 milliliters. And that's your volume there, theoretically. So we corrected the pressure, step one, using the water vapor chart. Step two, we did stoichiometry to find the moles of hydrogen. Given the mass of magnesium, we found the moles of hydrogen. We did a step one, step two on our stoichiometry roadmap. The next thing we did was to Pevnert solving for the theoretical volume. We used the corrected pressure. 
we subbed in the, the uh, moles that we found in stoichiometry. We used the gas constant to match our pressure units, and we also used the Kelvin temperature of the water bath, converted 22 to Kelvin. We did NRT divided by P and found the volume in a liter, slid that decimal three spots over to find milliliters, 29.2, that's our theoretical volume. So now let's calculate our percent error. How well did we do? We were told we generated 31 mils. So whatever your udiometer tube reads, that's your experimental volume. 31 mils was given to us in this example. We calculated that we should have generated 29.2 mils. That's our experimental minus theoretical. This sits inside of an absolute value sign, so subtract them either direction. Just make sure it ends up positive. Divide that by, divide the difference, so make sure you hit equal. Divide that by your theoretical and express it as a percent. So this is telling you how well your experiment worked. 31 minus 29.2 equals 1.8 divided by 29.2 equals times 100. This experiment ended up with a 6.16 percent error. Pretty darn good. I hope yours comes out equally well. You'll run two trials of this and process the data exactly as I've shown you here. I hope you have a great day.